Ja, da sê, dan gaan we ek. Prachtig, alright. Woof, hy weet ons is allemaal by excited. I know everybody's got a lot of things on their mind. But before we do anything, we always give thanks and praise to our Creator for the gift of life, love and peace we experience in this life and in all the lives to come. It's an honor and a privilege for me to be again available today to talk about things that are important for us that we don't see in all the places. If this is the first time that you are seeing me, if the first time you're hearing me, if the first time you're even falling on this live, I want to just firstly welcome you. Kore Korere, welcome and want to say it is an honor that we have this opportunity to share some truth with you. My name, Tita Kere, Danap Etienne Davids. I'm an indigenous chief here from South Africa in the beautiful western coast, west coast, western coast, west coast of the Western Cape. Yes, like trying to say that fast. Um, and my duty and my purpose is to impact the world positively through connection, creation and conversation so that we can increase kindness and decrease suffering. And one of the things that I really pilot and try to put a lot of energy into is sharing of truth. And I've compiled a document, and if you've missed the first half of this, um, I have actually done the first half where I went over the history of our country and explaining this in detail and providing some uh, further reading resources for you to go over for yourself so you can start reading. Um, we will be discussing the Republic of South Africa, which I did go through yesterday, but I will restart there and we'll be breaking down what the background of law is, lawful and legal. I know you probably heard that before. This is legal and that's lawful and that's unlawful and this is illegal so that we can at least just get a grasp of that. Um, then what we'll also be discussing is we will then dive into the Constitution of South Africa because I know everybody says, yeah, the Constitution, but do we really understand, overstand and understand what it was, what it meant, what it's about? Um, I will then also be giving some references to some more reading uh, and then we will discuss the Bill of Rights if we can get through the Bill of Rights before we actually get to the law. If we don't get to the portion where we actually talk about the law and what is natural law, um, then we will actually just try again in another subsequent video. I know that there are those that are waiting to have another uh, episode of the White Spirit Boy Trust and the Infinite Bank Statements uh, and the Infinite Banking System and the World Bank Syndicate. Um, there will be a series that will be released uh, to follow up on the last episode. You're all, all welcome to watch that in my YouTube. All replays are put there. For anyone that is concerned about yesterday and that wasn't um, available or couldn't watch the live public address of Empress Queen Valerie Sabina Listi III. I implore you and I encourage you to have a look at the replay. It is uploaded on my YouTube. I try to upload it as quickly as possible and you're able to find um, the link in my bio clicking on my website which will then take you to the very first tab that is the replay so that you have easy access to it. If you are a first time registrar on the Aboriginal database this is also a perfect time for you to then if you have not yet registered, to then go to the second tab and click on that. For anybody that is looking to support me directly and to support the continuation of the content that's being put out here on my website, you'll also find right at the bottom some of the services that I offer, as well as a link to um, aid in some form of sponsor or deposit via PayPal in order to continue either to support me directly or to support some of the other actions which I am taking together with a bunch of other uh, sustainable development companies, groups and individuals and communities to help build sustainable food systems, sustainable energy, sustainable mobility, um, as well as a sustainable payment system where you're rewarded for good deeds similar to Zlato, which we will be partnering with soonish enough um, once the ink is dry um, to be able to then get you as someone that's doing a good deed in their community to earn online digital credits that are then transferable and used on our platform for things like uh, food, energy, or some of the products we sell, honey as well. We've got beautiful indigenous honey that's coming directly from indigenous honey farmers who then bottle at the source and uh, we distribute it uh, as cum honey so that you know that it is we the original first Abor aboriginal first nation people the so-called koyosan uh, or known koyosan and called colored people we don't need handouts we don't need help nobody's coming to save us we can do it for ourselves as long as we stand together and unite all right 
we're going to dive straight into today. Um, this document is not available. It's my own, um, uh, let's say, compilation of facts, resources, and references that I've put together in order to try and get what we are all arguing about. Everybody keeps saying, yeah, this and this, and a lot of people have opinions, and a lot of people have um, a lot of things to say and are quite vocal, but when you have a debate or a discussion with them, then it comes from a place of, no, but this is how I feel, and what I'm trying to do is eliminate that. I don't want you to get baited into an argument. I don't want you to have some of the horrible comments and some of the horrible messages that people send because of their own ignorance and because of the fact, outside of ignorance, because of the fact that they aren't able to separate themselves from their feelings and emotions because we are not our feelings. We are not our emotions. They are a tool within our uh, arsenal of things that we can use to navigate this wonderful place and this incredible experience we call life. Um, but more importantly, we are so convinced and so indoctrinated by the lie that we cannot see the truth for what it is. And that's the purpose of this live. And if you are joining, I'd like to just ask that you please let me know your name and where you're from. Thank you to those that are already sharing. Brian, welcome. Keenan, thank you so much for the follow as well. You're more than welcome to join my digital tribe. DD, thank you for coming on board and for being here. Numbuso, Radebe, welcome. It's so wonderful to have you. Mumbai, um, Mumbai Kubuka, Mumbai. When the Dutch arrived here, did they find people who speak Afrikaans? Very good question. And and if you want to, this part that I have available on the screen at the moment is what I had already gone through yesterday. Um, there's a detailed discussion on that on my YouTube as well. But we'll just quickly run through through uh, a read through what the history is of um, southern Africa. The very first modern humans are believed to have inhabited South Africa more than 100,000 years ago. In 1999, UNESCO designated the region the cradle of humankind, a world heritage site. And that just literally means that the same syndicate and the same illegitimately powered elite group few, the United Nations, the World Bank, the um, World Health Organization, the World Economic Forum, the International Monetary Fund, the Catholic Church, the United Nations, all these people that everybody keeps referencing and saying, oh, but that's the truth. And what are you talking about? You're just the crazy Rasta man. And you're just talking a whole lot of rubbish out of your ass, man. Stop giving us this Google information that you found or whichever. And those are the same people that will uh, <laughs> rebut your, uh, uh, sorry, but are you sure that's what's happening? It's like, man, just go and Google it. You'll find all the proof there. Um, this is that same people, and, and what I have used is I've collated and collected all that information to try to formulate it all together so we can then look at it and say, okay, what is it that they say? Now, UNESCO designated the region the cradle of humankind, um, which means that all human species, all modern-day humans, come from here. Uh, South Africa's first known inhabitants have been referred to as the Khoisan, or the, Khoi, uh, the Kuku and the San people. And this is starting around 1000 BCE, before Christ. These groups were then joined later by people who migrated from the West and Central Africa during what was known as the Bantu expansion. Now, this is just so that we can get out of the way the argument that colored people, uh, because again, that's not a nationality, that's not a, an, um, a, a people, a nation, that is a racial classification provided by a um, uh, totalitarian government during apartheid that they decided to pull everybody together specifically to eliminate and erase the history and the culture and the origins of the Khoi and the Kuku and the San people, the uh, original first inhabitants of the Southern Africa's. Excuse me. So uh, just to answer your question, when it, when it came to the European exploration, this only happened in the 13th century when the Portuguese arrived. And if you know about the Battle of Salt River, you'll know that the Portuguese lost. Um, yeah, you know that the only reason why anybody was trying to do anything was around commerce. It has to do with trade. If you know anything about the papal bulls, what the Catholic Church was doing is like they gave everybody basically carte blanche. They go say, go rape, pillage, kill, steal, claim to be your own in the name of Almighty God. In Je well, not actually in the name of Almighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that we can convert people to Christianity. And that's what all that uh, the Crusades. And please don't misinterpret this as a Christian bashing. I don't subscribe to religion. I don't um, res uh, uh, disrespect people that do subscribe to religion. But there are two things that you can get from our Creator, from God. There are two ways. You can either have religion or you can have relationship with Him. And one of them is within and one is of them is without. I'm sure you already have realized that religion is without God. And when you have relation, it is within because that is with God, and God is within us all. Uh, so when we look at these various accounts, uh, I recommend that you do go and have a further read on the early history before 1652. There's a there's an entire piece. If you just type in a search on any of your search engines, I would definitely recommend that you try the archive.org, which is a great source. 
um, and then also start reading about the age of discovery and what colonization is to help give you some context as to what was it that these people found this terra nullis these non-human subhuman creatures that they determined the original people when they found the inhabitants here they were speaking various languages when the europeans came here because of the fact that some southern part of africa was already um, a very key point in terms of trade the uh, the indigenous peoples uh, both inguni and um, bantu um, at that time had already learned how to speak variety of international language from uh, any of the asian or um, asianic languages to uh, portuguese french and the others but the indigenous inhabitants spoke nama dramada uh, um, 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 there's there, there are very specific languages which have now been died out and that are no longer part um, of our culture or of our history and especially not a part of the south african republic so the republic of south africa this is the part where we all are asking questions because a lot of people and whether it's me that's saying is you know this from your own research or you've heard it from some of the other social um, individuals that you or creators that you have on social that you know and follow have been telling us that the South African Rep the Republic of South Africa is registered on the Securities Exchange, the U.S. Securities Exchange, as a corporation. The entire republic and all the way that it's put together, it's not actually the way that you feel that it is a democratic republic. It is actually just a company that has a rules, regulations, and a mandate and a con constitution, the same as any other president, uh, um, any other company, uh, and is not here to serve the people. It's here to serve. Um, its owners and if you want to know more about that then you can start diving into again like i said if you just look at the history of where we come from but we'll get to a portion of that so let's just quickly um, read over the most important portion here the judicial authority of the republic of south africa is vested in the courts these provisions are contained in section 165 of the constitution of the republic of south africa now today's piece what we are really looking at is this the background of the law i don't know if you've had any experience if you are a lawyer if you're an attorney if you are a practicing practi or practitioner of the law um, as a normal living human being as a sovereign not as a citizen but as a as a living man or woman we only have interactions with the courts or with um, the court system or the uh, illegal law lawful system not lawful legal system when it comes pushed to shove where the, either it's your you are standing as the accused or the respondent or if you are the plaintiff with somebody else that you're facing other than that we don't get taught it at school we don't get taught it at um, high school we don't get taught it at our homes you can't switch on the tv and watch a kiddies show or see an, an important piece that's going to break down what the law is what legalese is what um, uh, some of these things that are literally your life hanging in the balance when you appear in some of these admiralty courts and we just want to go through what the background of the law is now i know that a lot of this is going to cause some emotional distress and maybe give you a knee-jerk reaction but i'd like to ask you just to put your emotions one side for one one moment just for this period this one small slither of time that we have together to put your feelings and emotions aside and to listen comprehensively and to uh, engage from a point of respect where we keep the comments respectful and more importantly where we are open to actually walk away from here better equipped more um, knowledgeable or at least um, have some confirmation on the things that we've already known now the background to the law the National Party, and everybody knows who the NP is, that's the current DA, um, they imposed apartheid in 1948. Now, if you're not a South African, if you're not familiar with what apartheid is, you can look at what's happening in Gaza, the same thing that's happening between the Palestinians and the Israelis, where the Zionist Jewish, uh, and I'm not taking sides here, I'm just stating facts, uh, the Zionist Jew, uh, Jewish um, uh, cabal is instituting a limitation on all in ra racial segregation specifically now the islamic or muslim community and this happened in south africa towards melanated people or people that were non-european or like they used to say white and black this institutionalized uh, uh, in 1948 institutionalizing previous ra racial segregation so we have to really understand and understand that before they imposed this made this law made it illegal for me as a person of color to be at a beach or to ride a certain uh, bus or to enter a building or to have certain services there was already racial segregation this is also something that you can read up from uh, the previous portion of the history of south africa and like i said that's a replay uh, in my youtube 
the dissolution so that means the the dissolving or the taking a part of the Soviet Union in the late 1980s meant that the African National Congress in alliance with the South African Communist Party could no longer depend on the Soviet Union for weaponry and political support now we know that during the time of apartheid of this institutionalized racial racial segregation there was a armed struggle and a lot of the support that came uh, the MK the UDF the a lot of the support came to all of those uh, youth leadership and those that were still part and parcel of what the main mission was before they were corrupted were getting support from other internationals and during the 1980s that support from the uh, Soviet then Soviet Union now Russia was put to an end it also meant that the apartheid government could no longer link apartheid and its purported legitimacy to the protection of Christian values and civilization in the face of the Rui Gefar or the red danger the threat of communism now I know that if you're familiar with history you also know about the Cold War during the time of uh, the danger of the commies we've got to worry about the Soviet I, I really implore you to to take a look at this information and understand that it all has to do with commerce this has got nothing to do with your liberty it doesn't have anything to do with your inalienable rights it has nothing to do with your freedom of expression or your your beauty in your ethnicity in your eth ethnic diversity in your your nationality not even your nationality where you come from your komfandan is what we say in Afrikaans um, but this had literally to do with com uh, commerce um, and during this time like I said, if you're familiar with the papal bulls, when the uh, the Pope at that time of the Catholic Church put out, this is what they deemed the age of discovery, where they were like, no, Christopher Columbus has found America. He's discovered it. And this is now not um, India, because they were looking for, he was looking for India, went all the freaking wrong way. Those instructions that were given by these, other than the British being pirates at the time, the Catholic Church was given instructions, absolute carte blanche, uh, to all of these criminals and unassured rivers to go and destroy, pillage, and steal on different portions of different parts of the la of the world in order to convert everybody to Christianity. And when all these other things fell apart, the legitimacy, and that means that this is what gave it substance. This is what gave it the reason for ons moet apartheid het, want onthou die communisme, die rooie gevaar, hulle is die ouwens wat hierdie donker sleutels aanspleeg. That all of a sudden fell away when the Soviet Union was like... No longer able to support them both sides remember this is not just a one-sided ar argument or issue both th both sides were forced to negotiate to the negotiation table now if you are being forced to come to terms do you think that those terms are going to be beneficial to everybody or only going to serve those that are at that table with the result um in june 1991 all apartheid laws were finally rescinded now, if you were, I was born in the 80s, if you lived through this already, despite uh, some piece of paper saying that you no longer can do this, you know that in the hearts of men and women and in the minds of men and women, you are not going to rescind something that has been indoctrinated, systematically placed to be the truth and taking into consideration the erasure of the history, culture and truth behind the indigenous peoples, regardless of who they were, Khoi, San, Nguni, Bantu, Stans, or whichever, the fact that that was taken out of the pages of history and replaced with the new truth, those, despite being rescinded in 1999, they were still living in the hearts of men and women. And I can even attest to that, where people were still treating you with disrespect post-1999, 2000s even still, just because of the color of your skin, based on this bullshlacher right of right of admission reserve. But in any case, all apartheid laws were finally rescinded openly. So that was just to try to relieve some of the pressure. If you know about the Oppenheimers and the De Beers and the uh, rest of these Ruperts and all the rest of these uh, um, elites that control everybody and i say they control because they only are in, in they've got their dirty hands in and dipped in blood of others and stained by the sweat and tears of others in order to just enrich themselves and their family uh, but they were only rescinding these in order to remove sanctions and to allow for international treaties and trade because they were struggling under that they couldn't continue on with their where as much as they wanted to we cannot and this is a message to all people that are fighting for liberation or standing up in against injustice that our fight is not for one group people or nation it is for all liberty for all um, but they rescinded this and this was to open up the country's first 
multiracial democratic elections three years later, 1994, if you can remember that, was an incredible time. As the culmination of mounting local and international opposition to apartheid in the 1980s, including the armed struggle, the widespread civil unrest, there was toy toys and you remember Sharpville massacres and, and, and the amount in Sophia Town where the, the youth were standing in uprising and now it's also the same time. Don't, don't, let, don't be fooled by the fact that there's all these old title holders and people that are licking their wounds post-apartheid that don't really care about what you really want. It's the youth that made it. They've forgotten where they come from. They've forgotten the power that v- is vested in each individual and now is the time for you the youth you the person that is deciding on the future that all these or that needs to decide and take action on the future that everybody else is busy arranging and making rules and all sorts of things without your uh, involvement it's now that same time that they were struggling with this wide spread civil unre- un- unrest and like i mentioned the economic and cultural sanctions by the international community this pressure from the anti-apartheid government movement or anti-apartheid movement around the world the state president mr fw de Klerk, who also made a bu- uh, an apology i don't know if you saw that lovely uh, little piece of theater as well uh, where i do feel like in a sense there was some sincerity in some of the things that he said because you cannot no matter how nice your words are erase the memories the things you know the things that you signed off, the things you witnessed. And I could see that pain in his eyes just before he died. He was like, oh, I'm sorry and all this. But because of that, Mr. F, uh, pre- the former president, state president, F.W. de Klerk, announced the lifting of the ban on the African National Congress, the Pan-African Congress, and the South African Communist Party, as well as the release of political prisoner Nelson Rorichlatla uh, Mandela on the 2nd of February 1990, after 27 years of, of, of prison. Now, I know a lot of the others that might uh, be conspiracy factists will say, yes, Madiba is one, but there was a different one. Um, Goodwill was the other one that was actually put in place, and he's the, the puppet ma- uh, masket. Uh, we know that uh, Nelson Mandela was a 33-degree mason, and he was also... Uh, one of the members of the Knights Templar. All I am doing here is presenting what is told to all of us and to all of those that are going to look for it from official sources or whatever, what the narrative is. To get your opinion and your um, your feelings out of the way so that we can then move from a point of this is what is officially accepted and this is officially what is being said so that we can deconstruct it and say, is this truly for the people, by the people, and with the people in mind? Um, so uh, Nelson Mandela was then released after 27 years of in prison and in a referendum held on the 17th of March in 1992, the white electorate voted a 68% in favor of demonocracy. Now, if you remember yesterday, if you didn't watch the previous version, this is the best way to explain democracy to you and why I even advocate don't vote, deregister from the voters role. You can consider s- society uh, as three players, right? There's two wolves and a sheep. In a democratic society, uh, you can then say, we're going to vote what's for supper. Now, if there's two wolves and a sheep, what do you think is going to be for supper? When we are living under inalienable rights, natural law, universal laws, you're providing a, a weapon, a means of defense for the sheep. So that when the vote comes to say, what are we having for supper? We are not having loin chops tonight. We are eating grass. Now, this is why 68%. How is it that... After all those years of oppression, after all the laws, all the brutality that took place, and this was not just about, oh, but there was colored people and there was black people and there's human beings, women and men that live where the blood flows through them, were persecuted and destroyed and marginalized and everybody benefited from it. And then all of a sudden when the pressure was too much, it was like, now nah, listen, we gotta, let's rather vote and say, yeah, let's have democracy. 68%. That's almost a... Uh, two-thirds majority were like, yeah, we're in for this. Voted in favor of democracy. Now, if that does not let your spider sense tingle and make you start asking questions, I don't know what will. After very lengthy negotiations uh, um, under the auspices, oh, and this is something that you've probably heard a lot of uh, traditional Aboriginal leaders. There are people that are fighting for liberation as well that are on the forefront activists that's mentioning CODESA. But the CODESA, so you can know what these acronyms, because these people like to use acronyms and three alphabet letter numbers, the Convention for a Democratic South Africa. That was the CODESA negotiations. A draft constitution was published on the 26th of, uh, of July in 1993. And this contained the concessions towards all sides. So it's like, um, we want to be able to go to wherever we want. 
Right, as reg, ons allemaal toelaat dat jullie dit kan doen, maar onthou dat uh, White Monopoly Money will still be in control of everything. Alright, well they will take concessions. We'll make you president, you can have the ruling powers and go for that. And ja, jullie kan maar daar is, maar ons is altijd in die achterskerm. Yes, but we also want... That was what happened. Where were the koi? Where were the san? Where were the kam, the supreme beings? Where were the sonklas? Where were the indigenous a a aboriginals? Nowhere to be found at this meeting. And in these concessions against all sides, a federal system of regional legislatures, equal voting rights, regardless of race, and a bicameral legislator took place. Uh, so from the 26th to the 29th of April in 1994, the South African population voted in the first universal suffrage general election now universal suffrage is just like the age of consent in which they gave you if you're 18 years or older then now you are able to actually speak you are a um um a let's say they don't really mean it but it's now you are aware conscious of what you are doing um and suffrage also please to understand this this didn't just affect uh, your age it was also something that was put into uh, um, law to stop women from being able to work when women were still being persecuted under the patriarchy which still today we are finding um that everything is still run by the patriarchy um uh, and that people are still finding women so threatening and cannot understand that you need to take a seat back there is a time for all and just because someone else is more capable more willing more more uh, suited does not mean that that takes anything away from you we're working together uh, but then we know that the african national congress won i remember those celebrations I was in standard two at that time. I was very fortunate to have been enrolled at a school, Irene Primary School, a formerly white middle C school. There was only like we were a handful of students that were of color in that entire school. I remember my persecution. I remember because what was the intention of all the people that were coming out of apartheid, living now in a free democratic society? Ek wil die beste hee vir my kind. As ons weer hou was van hierdie, moet ons dan vir hulle soon toe kan stuur as ons kan. And not knowing that even though you are now putting all this pressure on these uh, young, young, young people to go in, they were navigating an ocean of indoctrinated people that still saw them as less than nothing. The Democratic Party and the Pan-African Congress, uh, among others, formed a parliamentary opposition in the country's first non-racial parliament. Nelson Mandela was elected as president on the 9th of May in 1994 and formed a government of national unity. Now, I want you to also I'll just pause here for a moment. If you are not familiar with the difference between Latin legalese and English, or just the way we normally speak it and what we get taught in our grammar schools and all the rest of this, legalese and Latin legalese is completely different. Things have different meanings. If you say person, you would think, oh, that's, that's like me. It's, no, 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 that's not. It's a monster. A monster which is less than human, does not really even exist. It's not a living man or being. Um, if we talk about things like unity and democracy and all these things, if you reference the Black Laws dif Dictionary, uh, you'll be able to find the true meaning behind all these people setting up these parliaments and legislations and uh, uh, referendums. You will actually read what they're saying instead of thinking what you're reading is true. So this government of national unity, uh, consisting of the ANC, the National Party, and Inkata Freedom Party, I don't know if you remember them, on May 10th, 1994, Mandela was inaugurated, I remember that was phenomenal, we had airplanes and everything, as the South Africa's new president in Pretoria with Thabo Mbeki. And a lot of people hated on him because they were like, yeah, yeah, Thabo Mbeki is more of a, when he was president, he was more of a minister of foreign affairs. Uh, but Thabo Mbeki also had a very pivotal role to play. Uh, and look who also was there. Together with Thabo Mbeki as a vice president was Mr. F.W. de Klerk as his vice. So it's interesting to find that in the name of democracy in like let's not do this again because remember the i don't know if you remember the stories of the nacht van die lang mess where most white people were terrified of the fact that well, all the all the donker sleutels gaan ons net moor hulle gaan ons omfrak maar because of the guilt that they felt from everything that has been perpetrated and please don't get uh, take this as a racial attack on anyone i don't find any logic behind blaming a born free or a descendant of these barbaric uh, animalistic uh, elitists to be responsible yes they have uh, privilege yes they've been benefiting from the others but i cannot hold them responsible for actions of the others what we can hold them responsible for is what they do with the knowledge of what their forefathers and foremothers and forebearers did and the benefits and privileges that they do receive what they are doing in order to correct what they have now learnt 
out of the truth. If you're still benefiting and still taking your ride and being like, oh, I'm just, there's no such privilege. It's here. We're living here. Go work. Go and buy your hair. Yeah. You try and live a day in our shoes. You try and walk into a room where just because of the color of your skin, shape of your hair, the dress that you have, you're automatically concerned and judged by whatever it is that somebody has. And when I open my back and I sound like a call center team leader, yes, like my brother, I'm buying more Afrikaans. Wow, you speak such nice English, completely disregarding anything else that has to do with me or anyone else that sounds or looks like me because this is a novelty. Uh, we just want to be aware of those things. The government of national unity lapsed so it only had a certain period. It expired the same way your milk does. Ragdat Frot. At the end of the first parliamentary sitting in 1999, with the ANC becoming the sole party in power. Now, there's a very interesting uh, reason why the word sole party and the sole of your foot and people have souls and is used because they became the sole party in power of all those who are wards of the state basically taking over and just shifting the powers uh, of those that were the elites into the hands of puppets of the elites. And a few of them aren't puppets. A few of them are actually, and yes, they do fall from and come from the Aboriginal indigenous descendants. Ala us koi, ala us san, ala us bant, bantu stana, any of them of the tribes, the Venda, Tsonga, uh, uh, Shona, the... Uh, is it Hossa, the any of the other, and the, the Nguni tribes? It's any, any, all of them. And if you go back and you read some of the histories, uh, pre 16th uh, century, 15th, 14th century, and you read some of these diaries, there were those that were colluding with the colonizers who didn't colonize, that just came here to corrupt. And this ANC government. Uh, then the, the, the government of the national unity lapsed at 1990 and the ANC became the sole pa party in power while maintaining a strategic alliance with the Congress of South African Trade Unions, KUSATU. Now, why would you think that it's so important, other than the purpose of saying, yeah, yeah, yeah KUSATU is there to make sure that the workers are getting rights and um, that everybody's still uh, being treated fairly at the workplace, when we know that labor... Without labor, there's no production, there's no... Even if you look at the one beautiful thing you've got, um, human resources, mm, that is exactly the reason why Kusato was there and why, out of all of them, they were the first uh, to have the strategic alliance. And a strategic alliance has everything to do with achieving those strategic goals, big picture goals. Five uh, years is maybe the small term, that's like the maybe today a week plan, but we're talking 10, 20, 50, 100 years uh, strategic planning, um, this was part of them. And then also, look at that. Phenomenal. Even though F.W. de Klerk from the former ruling party was sitting on as a vice president during the time of so-called democratic, democratic South Africa, then they were talking so much about the uh, communists and how bad the Soviet... Nothing was said or put in place to stop South African Communist Party from being one of those strategic partners. Uh, I have nothing against communism or socialism or any of the other, other conscriptions. I'm about individualism. I don't care what you think you are. I will defend to, to my death, my right to be who I am. I am sovereign. I don't need anybody to tell me I'm sovereign. After considerable debate and following submissions from advocacy groups. Oh, that's so nice. Let's just hear what you have to say and see what you have to say. Individuals and ordinary citizens. The parliament enacted a new constitution. How convenient, eh? We can have all these different... And if you go and see what the uh, original basis of the constitution was during the time of um, the British colonial rule and what they were talking about in that, that parliament of trying to break up the British territories, um, there was already a constitution that was developed. And that was actually what they just used to continue uh, on to draft this new constitution. The one that is true is the Bill of Rights and the Freedom Charter. Uh, so in 1996, we have a new constitution, and that was that piece where they were talking about act what, what, what from whatever, 1996. This is the constitution. Basically, if you want to try to just break that down, which we'll get to, the constitution is, is the what they now term to be the supreme law above all other law, which is meant to be upheld by all these government and corporate government departments, the justice department, and everybody that swears these oaths, not to you, even if you qualify yourself as a citizen, not to you as a sovereign, not to you, the people, not to you, the masses, not to you, the whatever you uh, identify as, but to the corporation the Republic of South Africa. Yes, they used the Bill of Rights. Yes, they used the Freedom Charter. But those were 
built off or based the foundation off of our inalienable universal rights. And the only reason why they keep throwing the Bill of Rights and the Freedom Charter in our face is so that we can not pay attention to what's happening in the con Constitution. The death penalty was abolished, land reform and redistribution policies were introduced, and equitable labor was uh, legislated. Now, let's just consider where we are. Fast forward to 2024 and take into consideration that in 1996, this could potentially be seen as our, let's say, bookmark for where supposedly all peoples living in the borders of South Africa are supposed to be uh, benefiting from land reform, uh, redistribution policies in both uh, labor and equity and uh, equitable labor laws were legislated. Do you feel that way? Do you feel that those things are still happening and that that was part of what the agreement was? This was in 1996 and we are still feeling the effects of that lie now. What makes you think that everything else that was based, uh, that, w that helped base this wasn't a lie? The ANC rose to power on the strength of of socialist agendas uh, embodied in the Freedom Charter, which was in intended to form the basis of ANC social, economic, and political policies. The Charter decreed, and this is what we don't hear, excuse me, the national wealth of our country, the heritage of South Africans, shall be restored to the people the mineral wealth beneath the soil, the banks and monopoly industries shall be transferred to the ownership of the people. How are we still living in poverty? How are we, who have to depend on a Sasa grant, able to then say, yeah, no, that's true, the national wealth of our country, all the minerals and resources that are being mined and expro uh, exported externally and all the billions of dollars of profits that's been made from that. Yeah, I can see that that improvement has been done in our school. I've been seeing that there are more medical facilities that are public uh, funded that are actually servicing our people. We don't have to sit six hours in a queue just to be told, uh, here's some panado. I want you to do the research yourself, not to say, oh, yeah, this is just another person that's just angry and bitter because of research yourself and you will find that the people you are trusting the ones that are supposed to be having our good intentions have forgotten what they're there for. They work for us. The national wealth of our country, the heritage of South Africans, you don't see Kwe, Mu, uh, Tramada, Nama as an official language. Do you? Do you feel that the heritage of South Africans has been returned? Does that not make us also Southern Africans? Did they restore this to the people? Where are the people that do identify as Tham, as, as Sontras? Where is their opportunity to actually have restorative justice take place? Where are our schools? Where are our support systems? Where are they not there? The mineral wealth beneath the soil, all the gold that's been mined out of Johannesburg, all the diamonds and precious stones and minerals that's being taken out of the Northern Cape, shouldn't all of that wealth be taking care of all of our social ills instead of lining the pockets of fat cat political puppets? Banks? They are the biggest gangsters, the largest syndicate, FNB, Investec, Ned Bank, ABSA, Standard Bank, every single one of those lying, manipulating gangsters have no intention of helping you, the people. Don't get caught up by their bullshit and their beautiful words and their lovely marketing campaigns because I, as a digital marketer and an expert in marketing and communications, can tell you it's all based on psychology to trigger emotional responses in your mind to actually just elicit the kind of uh, reaction I want. Uh, the banks and monopoly industry was supposed to be transferred to the ownership of the people. If we are the ownership of the people, you shouldn't be getting a Sasa grant in the first place. Every single South African should be receiving a beneficiary payment however the cycle is done at, at, without any question there's no need to be like yeah no 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 we're going to collect these in our coffers at the um the, the treasury yeah 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 yeah. Ooh, that's a great one hey maybe we should just allow some private institution to also yeah, yeah let's establish the south african reserve bank and make it so that they're the only ones that can print money uh and then we will decide what you guys want and you know what you can do if you want to have a say you little people down there at the bottom you can go to your ward councillor and then from your ward councillor the ward councillor will go to your mayoral executive once it's gone to the mayoral executive the mayoral executive and the people that are there will then go 
and speak to their district office. Once the district officers has been speaking to them, they will then have an opportunity to speak to provincial. Once provincial has had an opportunity to speak, they will then talk to national and have that conversation with national. Once it's finally at national, maybe it will make its appearance at parliament so that we can then finally hear, oh yeah, Etienne, some guy in the middle of nowhere in the, on the outskirts of the West Coast uh, was talking about the fact that we have homeless children and homeless elderly that are not being taken care of. Do you think that issue is isolated to just where I stay? No. Do you think that the parliament and the government and all these other fake institutions actually care about what benefits the people? No, it doesn't. The transfer to the ownership of the people never happened. It never happened. The ANC icon, Mr. Nelson Mandela, asserted in a statement released on the 25th of January 1990, the nationalization of the mines, banks, and monopoly industry is the policy of the ANC. And a change or modification of our views in this regard is inconceivable. Ek sal het nooit kon gesinnity, but... What is the narrative that you're hearing in the, in, uh, in the media, in legacy media, who, again, is controlled by white monopoly money? Don't tell me it isn't. Who runs News 24? Oh, wait, isn't that uh, the Onaspers? Oh, it, you can't say that. Yes, I can. Those Avia Birbura and those uh, Nationalist Party elite psycho suprem- white supremacists are still fitting the bill for dictating what you consume in the so-called free media. Don't get caught out. And when when, uh, Nelson Mandela was saying that a change or modification of our views in this regard is inconceivable, where is it that our political parties, our then supposed uh, representatives, are actually doing this? And don't tell me, how you see what the EFF is doing and Julius Malema, Etienne, you are just delusional and your eyes are closed. Look what they're doing. You can bluff as much as you want. I don't care how much you speak. How much action are you taking? If what you are saying is not there to empower and equip people in order for them to take action, you are not part of the solution. You are perpetuating the problem. Following the ANC's electoral victory in 1994, the eradication of mass poverty through nationalization was never implemented. The eradication of mass poverty through nationalization was never implemented. The ANC-led government, in a historic reversal of policy, woo, hi, you the cakey Plus two, plus four, nine, my bro, ah, reverse. The ANC-led government, in a historic reversal of policy, adopted neoliberalism instead. A wealth tax on the super rich to fund development projects was set aside while domestic and international corporations enriched by apartheid were excused from any financial reparations. Now, I know exactly what's going to happen in the comments and anybody else is watching this, even if you're watching this in the YouTube replay, you're going to be like, yo, can you see? This is just about you guys wanting money. Stop being lazy and looking for a shortcut. Even within our own Aboriginal leadership, and you know who you are, you are also just pointing fingers at your own leaders and other leaders within the same camp saying, nee, that's a cool mensa, but also mensa filet, because all they want is money. Hey, calm yourself. Understand, understand, and overstand this has everything to do with commerce and contract. If the nationalization of mines, banks, and monopoly industries in the pol- is the policy of the ANC and a change or modification of our view in this regard is inconceivable, why is it that a wealth tax on the super rich to fund these development programs so that we can have incubators, so we can have proper schooling and education, so we can have proper development of business ideas and um, industry set aside, while domestic and international corporations enriched, so they benefited, they gained benefit during apartheid, post-apartheid, after apartheid, apartheid, and all these others were excused. It's like, okay, listen, um, I know you guys have made hundreds of billions and you've really benefited. And also, oh, by the way, we've, we remember we've, we've, we've promised that we're going to have the, the, the uh, Department of Justice and all the judiciaries and all this stuff. They have to swear an oath to us so we can actually decide and, and who the actual most highest ranking judge. They have to actually answer to him. We can still decide what happens there. You guys will never see a day in court. You'll never have to worry about that. And any international uh, treaties or rules, any of that, we'll, we'll work with those same corrupt governments and those same corrupt institutions and banks in order to ensure that even though you were enriched you're not going to be taxed on that you're not going to have to go and have to pay for those things as reparations but that you can continue to steal rob pillage and destroy people's lives and we will just keep dancing this puppet dance and distract our people with bollocks 
entertainment and have them in fight. Because once they're fighting each other, they'll never see who the true enemy is. Large corporations were allowed. Now, if you know anything about allowed, no? If you are, I've got children and if you've been a child, you know. Well, you, of course, you've been a child if you're an adult. <laughs> when you're a child, you know. You are not allowed to have any sweeties. What was that? That's not a... A, a option for you that is a befial that is a befial that is an instruction a direct instruction you have no option large corporations were allowed to shift their main listings abroad protect yourself just in case somebody actually le- learns the truth and comes up and rises up and rides this um, admiralty law uh, law of the sea and actually gets to a point where they can be like hey this is rubbish this is true let's actually action this up Shift your stuff internationally, man. Let's go to the Americas. That's that's what's where, where the power will lie. And let's go to England, the Bank of England, and all those other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's going to want to fight that? What common South African is going to be able to attempt an appeal at something if they won't even get a response from their own municipality? What do you think that they will get from an international court? No, move all your stuff overseas and all your listings. But then you can trade them on our Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that you can continue to make money. According to the Solomus, uh, Solomon Johannes uh, to Blanche, a South African academic economist, the government's concessions to big business represented treacherous decisions that will have and are haunt South Africans for generations to come. That's why we are now saying, yeah, but it's vote DA, man. Look, the DA is going to be good. No, 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 no. Vote ANC. It's like, no, I'm going to vote NCC. Vote NCC. They were part of the same they say same same whatsapp group same group of colluders same names on that uh, uh, list of directors of the owners of the company called the republic of south africa that's listed on the securities exchange in the u.s now just make sure uh, we're still here now we're going to talk about the constitution because this is the one everybody throws in your face no 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 it's my constitution all right hey don't no 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 The Constitution of South Africa, and this is what I was telling you, you can see it in your, I don't have my copy now, I drive around with it in my car. Um, The Constitution of South Africa is the supreme law of the Republic of South Africa. Supreme law. So it doesn't matter, Sharia law, Judeo, Hebrew law, Karma, they disregard, even though those other laws and other uh, um, uh, vehicles are available, they are seen as subservient or sub- subordinate to the Constitution. I wonder why. I wonder why. It proves the legal foundation for the existence of the Republic. That's the only reason. Just like you're like, uh, uh, when you go to any place, it's like, oh, listen, we will provide funding and we've got so much uh, CSI that we want to help with these developments, social responsibility, capital. What's the first question they ask? Are you a registered entity? Why? Because they know that as long as you are put into that system, as long as you subscribe to those laws and commit to that, you will become a ward of the state. You're a tool, nothing more than someone that is too. Can he denki can he ek moet dit maar vir jou doen. Shame, the state's got to sort you out. The legal foundation of that is to ensure the existence of the republic. Why would you want to ensure the resistance of the republic? How can a piece of paper, when we, I look at my window, that's South Africa. That's Africa, baby. That sky, that is earth. But some piece of paper needs to be the foundation for the existence. So it means it did not exist. There was no such thing as the Republic of South Africa. But only through the Constitution that is the legal foundation thereof. It sets out the rights. Now, all of a sudden, we're not talking about natural rights or inalienable rights. Now, we can cherry pick and say, okay, even though the Bill of Rights says this and this, let's take that one. Uh, let's take that one. No, 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 no. no. Okay, wait, wait, wait. wait. If W, okay, other one's funny. Ha, ha, let's. Set out the rights and the duties of its citizens. It doesn't say it's men and women. It says it's citizens because you become a ward of the state. And it defines the structure of the government. Those hoops that we have to jump through, the the, the, the clump run around if you've ever tried to do anything. And I always keep mentioning a municipality because that's the closest piece of government that we have to deal with. Um, 
you have your uh, municipality and they're like uh, send you a rates thing and they're like listen your water and electricity is that da, 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 da. you're like but bro i'm an indigent I, I shouldn't be paying for this should be free uh, services for me because i'm an in- indigent i am on the indigent register there shouldn't be any of this why is this like this no okay uh, please go to this one and this one no get you down to hello meneer what can i make you help now you explain from over blah, 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 blah. Uh, wat jy eindelijk nodig het is, jy moet een brief na hierdie ene, jy moet hierdie forum, and that's exactly what the structure of government is, is to keep you playing musical chairs, running around and around round and around, because they are just testing you, the same way they do in a court, to see, is jy wakker, besef jy ons neek met jou, if you don't, you consent, so ons kan maar met jou doen soos ons wil, the current constitution, the country's fifth by the way, if you didn't know, so there was five versions. Hmm. I thought it was like, this is the thing that's going to be the... Wow, well, there's five versions. Okay, it was drawn up by the parliament, elected in 1995, uh, 1994, in the South African general election. So it was like, now we're free, we're democratic, let's do this. It was pro, uh, promulgated by the president on the 18th of December. So that just means that it came into effect. Uh, or it was now it said, okay, uh, there is no more other versions of other... There is no more draft. Nie. It is truth. And came into effect on the 4th of uh, February 1997, replacing the interim constitution. Oh, there was an interim constitution? Hi? Wonder who come? The first constitution was enacted by the South African Act of 1909. Now, a lot of people argue and say, yeah, uh, in 1652, that's when uh, South Africa came into being. And this is what this constitution of 1909. And you've heard a lot of people reference that colored people, the so-called colored people, the Aboriginal, were not included in those uh, discussions. And part of that, this is what they were referring to. The longest standing date of the first constitution was from 1909 till 1961. The constitutions have promulgated a republican form of government. So no one was going to say, wait, it, where have I heard that word republican before? Hey, that's in America, right? They've got the republicans and the democrats. But I thought we were in a democratic dispensation. Doesn't that mean that we're supposed to be a democratic republic? Or a democratic government? Why would you care? Why would you learn? You can now go to the movies. Don't worry, man. Now you can go bank at FNB. False cuss is weg. Don't worry, man. Since 1996, the Constitution has been amended by 17 amendment acts. The Constitution is formally entitled the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. Why isn't it not the Constitution of South Africa? Because the only reason why it exists is to allow for the foundation of the existence of the Republic of South Africa. The company the corporation the corporate government which is listed on the united states stock exchange it was previously also numbered as if it were an act of parliament now if you whoopsie if you are familiar with acts of parliament and statutes and that that where else have you seen acts that's my creatives that's my means of a tunnel gespeeld but when you were baby jesus of moses a love school or whatever wait an act is only when you are pretending on stage an act is only like as if it were real okay so that act number 108 you also there were how many other acts then 18 how many other things were we accepting to be as if it were real since the passage of the citation of the constitutional laws act neither it nor the acts amending it allocated act numbers huh it's funny how something is of use and of value at some times but not others have you ever asked yourself why i'd like you to do some further reading on your own and go and read you can do a search like i said i, I advocate going to the uh, um, archive.org as a, as a source for you to try to go and find memoirs and all these other things go to the department of justice then go to the south african government website go to south african what's this thing south african laws with the uh can't even know what this is either, but the Safali, the, the South African Law Institute or whatever, and you'll find those acts there. Even go to your municipality and ask your municipality's website where the acts and stuff, you'll see it there. N- uh, um, I want you to read about the South African Act of 1909. I want you to also go and read and find more information regarding the Pu- Republic of South African Constitution Act of 1983 and also the CODESA, the Convention for a Democratic South Africa. And then you can also do, for interest's sake, the Constitution 
uh, interim constitution of 99. Now, before I go on, let me just quickly go to the chats. We'll start uh, just so I can see if you're still with me. If you are still with me, please let me know who, uh, your name and where you're watching from. Let's just quickly have a look and see who else's comments are here before we carry on. Uh, Tessa, welcome. Thank you. Quick storm. Do I have to join WhatsApp and how? Uh, sorry, quick storm. I don't really understand what your question is. Truth seeker 007 Etienne, why aren't you admin and Valerie not answering questions on WhatsApp? Uh, well, I'm not too sure why. I think you can probably tell because I'm here and um, maybe your questions that you might have been asking will get to you. Remember, there's 25 million other uh, Aboriginal so-called colored people as well on these groups. Every single one of these administrators and people are are, are um, volunteers. They are working out of their own capacity at their own resources and things. And I know that you're impatient and I know that you are uh, find some of the answers to your questions yourself so you can have a form of, of evidence. If you have a question, you can post it here and I'll see if I can maybe answer it for you. But you need to come from a point of respect and departure of, of mutual understanding that you, nobody's entitled to anything from anyone else. You only have to breathe. Everything else is negotiable. Kumo, the original name of South Africa. is meaning rainy coast in Quemana. It is modern slavery. Tracy, 100%. Correct. Mandy, thank you for sharing the live. Clara Bella, welcome. Thank you so much. Hazel, welcome. Celeste, Didi, Lance Abrams, La Community Scene, thank you for the follow. Charmaine, thank you for the share. Uh, all the people on Charmaine's page, welcome. Linda, hi, Linda. Thank you for the share. Appreciate that. Beverly B B B Bolt, hi, Etienne. Kai Chies. Uh, it's lovely to have you here. Charmaine, this is very informative. Thank you. Uh, I, that's the whole point here. Instead of us watching uh silly things and watching why not just spend a little bit of time how how difficult is it to offer an hour and a half two hours uh to hear something from someone else that you don't hear maybe everywhere so that you can then go say okay can I work at the of replay and i can rewatch it and then make notes and then go and look for myself because i'm not asking you to trust me i'm not asking you to take what i am telling you as this is the i am trying to inform you so that you may come to a decision on your own because you are sovereign no one can tell you that you are not um so so i'm grateful for that beverly welcome from the western cape uh, so yeah i'm gonna see if i think he probably left um and just wh what was that guy's name here uh that was talk ticker yeah, I, I want you to also, I want to encourage you that's sticking around for you that's still um, part of the, the movement or that's trying to learn about your own identity and trying to educate and upskill yourself in terms of the things that we don't get taught regularly every day in the places we're supposed to be taught but is enforced on us on a, on a regular basis. These people, these individuals, these men and women that are out here trying to bait you into an argument throwing stones and, and, and uh, using horrible means to just be ugly and nasty to you are only trying to elicit an emotional response. I don't want you to fall into the trap. I don't want you to be reactive. I want you to be responsive. Take it in. Absorb it. And think, why would, why would somebody feel that everything is, is due to them? Why would somebody feel that I can now just out of... One thing I saw, one thing I read, one, I haven't done anything else in my life and I'm, I need to get spoon fed. I need to be told this because you say this and you say that when they haven't done their own uh, due diligence. And more importantly, if somebody's just attacking you and saying you're this and you're that and you don't know this and you haven't done this, where's the evidence? Nobody ever throws ev gives you evidence. They're like, yeah, yay prat strong ye from lady man, sir. And then I'm like, now I'm waiting for the want. Dit wat jy gesê het is nie reg nie want dit is eintlik hierdie. En dit het eintlik dit nie met hierdie is jy reference aan hierdie boek en daar. They never do that. They never do that because they are master baiters. I know what that sounds like and I'm intentionally saying it like that. But they are master baiters. They bait you masterfully so that you can react emotionally. Uh, so let's just carry on with the rest of this document quickly. We're going to run through the Bill of Rights. I'll just read through that. And then the one I really want to stop on is the law. Uh, I think we'll carry on with natural law and the other laws because this is what's also with the, I am the law. And people want to talk about like, yeah, but it's unlawful and it's illegal. And, it's, and we're going to get to that. The Bill of Rights. This is the part that I feel is not seen, spoken and broken down enough for us to truly understand. Chapter two of the Constitution. <laughs> Funny, hey? The things that's the foundation of all of this is only chapter two. 
Chapter 2 of the Constitution of... And how interesting is it that it's called the Constitution of South Africa and it's not Chapter 2 of the Republic of the Constitution of South Africa? In any case, uh, Chapter 2 of the Constitution of South Africa contains the Bill of Rights, a human rights charter that protects civil, political, and socio-economic rights of all... All people in South Africa. All these others that are talking about separatism and yeah, yeah, probably it. Yeah, violent this, you know. So what are you so what are you saying, Aten? Hey? Are you saying that you are not black? Hey? Are you saying that you are not you are you are Amakalati, you don't exist? Ja, sê vir hulle asjeblief, jy, jy hulle bestaan nie, was ons wit is en hulle swart is wat vir hulle gemaakt het. All people. If you are subscribing to the same bullshlager, of the fake de facto government under the statutes and acts and laws and all the the constitution that they have they're talking about the bill of rights is chapter two for all people why is it that you're not more upset with the people that enforce this thing than others that are pointing out that they are not included the rights in the bill apply to all law including common law Hi, wacht een biekie. Maar ons het nog gehoor van die constitution wat supposedly die supreme law is. Hoe kan hy die supreme is en sy chapter 2 ding is ook van toepassing in ander wette? Hmm. Constitution. Including the common law and bind all branches of the government including the national executive, parliament, the judiciary, the provincial government and municipal councils and just like the roman empire they are the same principalities municipalities <laughs> some provisions such as those prohibiting unfair discrimination oh yeah yeah there's definitely some of those that still happen in today unfair discrimination is still happening but there's provisions for that so that we can handle them but we don't take don't, you know, my constitution all right some provisions such as the pro, uh, those prohibiting unfair discrimination also apply to the actions of the private person. So you as a sovereign living in the private, not a citizen, not a ward of the state, as a living man and woman, the unfair discrimination um, provisions also apply to you. Huh, interesting. Very interesting. So there is provision made. You don't have to feel like you're naked, unprotected. You're standing here on a soapbox talking about this is what liberty is and I'm sovereign and all this. And then people are there. Listen, there's another one for the crazy house. Let's lock him up, put him away. He should talk. There is the same things that they are using in the constitution that have provisions that apply to you. Some uh, South Africa's first Bill of Rights was drafted primarily by Kadar Asmal. I know you'll remember that if you're old enough. And Albi Sash, uh, or Sach, uh, in 1988 from Asmal's home in Dublin in Ireland. Yet, all the way in Ireland, they wrote uh, the Bill of Rights. Then, would it be else here or they wrote it in Ireland? The text was eventually contained in Chapter 3 of the Transitional Constitution of 1993, which was drawn up as part of the negotiations to end apartheid. So it's like, right, oh, we've, wrote, we've now wrote this up. My stubby shillelagh has also been involved. We've wrote up this prescription, and that is what you're going to use. Remember who was involved at Kadesa and who was excluded? So even though this was drafted by Karar Asmal and all these people in 1988 in their beautiful Dublin home in Ireland, when it was part of the transitional constitution, it formed part of the negotiations to end apartheid. The Interim Bill of Rights, which came into force on the 27th of April 1994, the date of the first non-racial elections, was largely limited to civil and political rights, or negative rights. Oh, there's so much that you can learn about negative and positive rights, but now's not the time. We'll dive into that deeper, and that's also why I recommend reading further. The current Bill of Rights. So we're not talking about that first one that was drafted. We're not talking about the one that was submitted in the Transitional Constitution. The current Bill of Rights, which replaced that previous version. So it's not like, okay, here's ons die vorige ene wat ons gehad het nie, ons gaan een paar changekies maak, okay, here's ons nou by die nieuwe ene, it was like, this was, now it is no more, here is what is the Bill of Rights. Uh, was large, uh, the, the current Bill of Rights, which was replaced, uh, that which replaced it in on the 4th of February 1997, the commencement date of the final constitution, retained all of these rights and added a number of new 
positive economic, social, and cultural rights. How convenient uh, that the stuff that's supposed to be in the Constitution has to be in a subsequent chapter. The existence of the jurisdiction and application of the Bill of Rights is defined by Section 7 and 8 entitled Rights and Application, respectively. Section 7 provides that the rights apply to all people in our country. All people in our country. No one is excluded. There's no separatism here. There's no uh, nepot not nepotism, uh, favoritism. It's for all the people in our country. Although certain rights are limited to citizens. I wonder why that is. So what's the difference between a citizen and a people then? Hmm, these are questions that I want you to answer. The require, th and, they requ and this requires the state, by which is meant the government at all of its levels, to respect, protect, promote, and fulfill the Bill of Rights. Nou, ek weet nie wanneer laatst was jy in een kliniek geweest nie. Ek was nou onlangs in die Perlse provinciale hospitaal waar ons sal uitkom. But do you, as somebody that's gone to public health care, ever felt that the rights, the positive rights, are protected, respected, and promoted, and fulfilled? I don't. I'd like to hear from you. Let me know in the chat. It also notes that the rights in the bill are subject are subject to the limitations provided for in section 36 and elsewhere in the bill so i know you've watched parliament before and we normally just waited to, to watch the people <laughs> snork and crap and in the and beclay and whatever but you always hear them uh, subsection 3-58296 nobody cares it's in your constitution it's in the bill of rights go and read it for a change go see what these people are talking about Go read a little bit. And I'm just going to give you the small portion here. Rights contained in the Bill of Rights are not absolute and may be limited by way of specific limitation clauses where individual rights are subject to limitations set out in the individual sections. So example, Section 9 on equity. In addition, the Constitution provides a general limitation clause. So we are now going to say, okay, there's some specific limitations, but generally, does this sound like freedom? Does this sound like for the people, all the people, respect, promote, protect? That general limitation at, uh, at section 36, which provides for all rights in the Bill of Rights to be limited in terms of law of general application that limitations must be reasonable and justifiable in an open and democratic society based on human dignity equity and freedom any limitations must therefore be reasonable and may only be made with good cause Limits should also be less restrictive. Now, if you are not sure of understanding what this is, think back to COVID-19, 2019, bats, Wu-Wong, all that Pfizer little. All of a sudden, our rights were suspended. All of a sudden, that general limitation clause in the Constitution was legally allowed to uh, be implemented. Not lawfully, legally legalese because there is a provision made in the constitution for general limitation and these limitations must be reasonable and justifiable were they reasonable and justifiable or were they based on fear-mongering manipulation and control any limitations must therefore be reasonable and may only be made with good cause do you feel that there was good cause behind those and i'm telling you not as a means to fear if monger you but there will be more that was a test run that was the first half and i know second half okay covid 
almost prior to each and you'll see there'll probably be a, a thing somewhere that will end up saying uh never go uh gevolgs ontdek van variants van hierdie ding is and they will say can you see can you see what the world health organization was saying can you see can you see when bill gates the main funder of the world health organization was talking about diseases and treating diseases through immunization and even though africa is the guinea pig where they come and test all the stuff before they do it anywhere else where they give it to us come on likes for free actually but give it to us through loans provided by the international monetary fund and by the world bank so they can test their medicine and their their uh, uh, genetic mutation and their uh, sterilization things on us because they don't actually want us here they just want enough of us here to do all the labor and all the smart ones to be eradicated and by smart ones i mean the ones that are prepared to take action and not just hear and listen and do uh, and say something uh, and do an actual thing yeah Ek weet, dis, dis heavy. Organs of state, that's all of them. So ek weet, jy werk miskien by die state. I know you probably are an employee of the state. So you're like, yeah, Etienne, what am I going to do? I need to provide for my family, bro. I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it, bro. I can't find a job anywhere else. I can't do this, I can't. I've already considered crime. You know how many people I've spoken to that are unemployed? That number that they give us, 50 whatever percent, it's much higher. That are saying, Etienne, these are respectable people in our community. You'll be like, Rerig? Sal die man, nu o alla, sal die vrou nooit, nie wak op ewe. Etienne, I am considering crime as an option because I cannot find alternative means of feeding my family. Not from lack of finding, not from lack of trying, but because it is near impossible to find something that is going to provide a living standard without it being me offering up so much that I get nothing in return that actually what I've become is another debt slave. All organs of state, all of them, even if you work at that department, such as the judiciary, the legislature, or the executive, Swartland Municipality Executive Council, Swartland Municipality's Executive Mayoral Council, hmm, may invariably limit rights in carrying out their functions. For example, by limiting the freedom of prisoners. Yeah, it's nice to use the example of, yeah, yeah, no, but you see, that one committed a crime, and because he committed a crime, we need to limit their freedom. But you know that these statutes and these other acts that they write into law, into legal, is what then also makes you a criminal. Like the current Bella Act, that Bella, Bella says there, that if you as a parent denies uh, the access to a, a vaccination for your child because you have your own purposes and your own private capacity and reasons for why you don't want to vaccinate your child, you're committing a criminal offense and they will then limit your freedom of uh, by imprisonment, by means of imprisonment. <laughs> no, it's not. You're not. You are a ward of the state. A shallot, a chalot. Your child is also property of the state. And since... Everything you own, because your child, even though it was born, you gave over that right when you gave a birth certificate, that child becomes a ward of the state too. And if you cannot act, they'll send in social services to kidnap your children and take them away. You're, in, you're incapable. No, you can't do it. Let the state take care of you. Oh, and what happens to your children? Form part of the child trafficking ring. You have to spend X exorbitant amounts of money and time to try and fight a bureaucratic system that has no intention of actually doing what's best for the parents and the children or what's most important what's best for the child they'll use that phrase all the time but they can limit your freedom further because of the horizontal application of the bill of rights horizontal vertical so the honey op of afi that blaine now my level rights may be limited by the action or decisions of other persons reke daga ek doen Ek groei my eie dagge. Hulle sit nou nog na hoeveel jaar om hierdie uh, private cannabis bill deur te stoot. And it won't be. And they're still going to limit the what somebody else is going to decide for you. The courts, want dis nou die stikkie wat ons allemaal ons altyd is, en jy gaan jy hof toe vat, praak met my prokureer, don't talk to me. The courts are empowered to test the validity of the limitations in terms of section 36 and section 36 provides certain factors that must be taken into account by the court when determining a limitation um, is a reasonable and justifiable one the nature of the right the importance of the limitation the nature and extent of the limitation the relation between the limitation and its purpose and the less restrictive means to 
to achieve that purpose. These factors are not absolute and other factors that the court may deem necessary may also be taken into account. When the nature of the right is considered, the courts will have to take it into account the content of that right, the importance of the right and the interest which it protects. Now, this is why I really wanted to get to the law part, because, again, they're saying that the power, the absolute, um, the, this is all vested in the courts, right? So the courts, who the, 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 like I was saying yesterday, where do you play? What else is played on a court? Tennis and basketball is a game. Let's talk about the law. The law is a set of rules that are created and enforced by social or governmental institutions to regulate behavior. I thought that laws were there to protect us. I thought laws were there in order to help. Uh -uh. <laughs> is there to regulate your behavior with its precise definition, a matter of long standing debate. So what that literally means is the reason why you, they say, no, you have to procure a crime advocate because they don't, they don't even know. They, they decide off whatever it is, what they are saying and how they're saying what that actual definition is. Moving away from the maxims of law, which is like gravity. You can't, no matter how you feel about it, no matter what your opinion is or whatever it is, you know that that is true. Gravity is there. You can see it, test it yourself. But these guys are out here. There's no precise definition as a matter of long-standing debate. Long-standing debate meaning that for so long, as much as others have joined this conversation, they still haven't found a definition. It's been variously described as a science and the art of justice. <laughs> State-enforced laws can be made by a group of legislatures or by a single legislator, resulting in statutes by the executive through decrees and regulations or established by judges through precedent, usually in common law jurisdiction. Now, precedent is different from case law. And we'll dive into that again in another session. But I really want you to take what this portion of this uh, presentation is about. And that's just to get a clearer understanding of what the law is. Private individuals may create legally binding contracts, including arbitration agreements that adopt alternative ways of resolving disputes to stand court litigation. So you yeah, need to say, well, because they are still def deciding on what the definition is, you and me as an individual, a private individual can say, okay, here's a legally binding contract. I don't have to have some procurator or somebody else go and give me, I'll draw it up ourselves because we have unlimited liability. We can draw this up and say, okay, in the event of arbitration of any of this agreement, like arbitration is just like if there's a, like a dispute or we want to discuss this or whatever, this is how we can resolve it and it will stand in the court of law. So if you can make up that contract, and please don't take this in the negative sense, but if you can make it up, whatever it is, and it can stand in the court of law, then that piece of paper that you've decided between that was in the minds of men and women is then the only thing that the court is going to consider to be worth legally binding. So as Egno say, as ye know ye, Moet adop moet aanvaar as betaling. En jy teken my, jy verstaan ook nou wat die gesê. When you say, nie maar, iemand heeft my gesê, my basic human rights, my bill of rights, the freedom charter is protecting, en ek, nee, 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 jy het hier die contract geteken, en al is dit, dat ons allemaal weer daarvan, even though we are familiar with the fact that the dop stelsel, and it's still being implemented, don't be fooled, um, is there to try to manipulate you, you signed a contract, sir, and... According to the contract, that's the terms, we rule in favor of the same fail gut that actually slapped you over the cup and there's nothing you can do about it. The creation of laws themselves may be influenced by a constitution. Now, why does it say that? That the creation of laws themselves may be influenced by a constitution. Does it mean that there could be any? Or does it have to be the Republic of South Africa's constitution? No. A constitution. Written or tacit, and the rights encoded therein. The laws shape political, economic, history, and society in various ways and always serves as a mediator of relationships between people. The scope of law can be divided into two domains public law which concerns the government and society, that's me and you and everybody else that lives in this, that includes the constitutional law, the administrative law, and the criminal law. While private law, you as a sovereign, me as a sovereign, living man or woman, 
deals with legislative or legal disputes between parties in an area such as contracts. If you're telling me that contracts, like even my employment contract, even the contract that I signed for my cell phone, even the contract that I signed for the bank, that is under private law, not government public law. How come, how come we don't, why is it that you have to then, oh, now it makes sense why I need a private attorney. Now it makes sense why I need to get a private notary. Now it makes sense why I need to go to, pri- because they can write it however the hell they want and base it off of whatever benefit they can get in the public court, because that's where the criminal law and the constitution, because you know, it's my constitutional right, this consti- this contract is unconstitutional. Hey, what does government do? And what does the government do? It's like, no, no, no. This is public concerns, and we subscribe to these, and that's private issues. So it should be, dis- uh, it's a dispute between two parties. Contracts, property, torts, deletes, and commercial law, that's all private stuff. The distinction is stronger in civil law. It's a third one. Um, in civil law countries, uh, particularly those with a separate system of administrative courts. By contrast, the public-private law divide is less pronounced in common law dis- jurisdiction because they are inalienable rights. You can't limit it. You can't decide, oh, but it's only for this one. Oh, we're only going to have rights for this one. It's, oh, it's only this one. It's only this one. We're going to give you this and we can decide what it is. All people. Law provides a source. <laughs> Let me say that again. Law provides a source of scholarly inquiry into legal history philosophy, economic analysis, and sociology. Law also raises important and complex issues concerning equity, fairness, and justice. Everybody that tells you, no, 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 it's the law, I'm doing my job, I'm a traffic cop, and I'm going to you, I'm going to you, I'm going I call now. Before anything even happens, before that public official, because they are under public law, and what do you need to do if you're in a public uh, space or acting as a public? You need public liability insurance. We ever heard that before? Oh, when we were shooting movies, when we were busy with adverts, when we were making films. Yeah, do you guys have public liability? Oh, you want to set up this thing and you want to do that? You want to set up a concert? There's an event. Do you have public liability in case some shit goes down? Law provides a source of scholarly, school, teach, learn, let's debate, let's talk, let's discuss, inquiry, into the legal history, philosophy, economic analysis, and sociology. Law also raises important and complex questions concerning equity, fairness, and justice. Now, we'll continue with the other portions um, tomorrow at another... Uh, episode and I will be uploading this onto YouTube to be viewed as a replay unedited of course so you can Alice view it if you've just joined and you just jumped in sorry man don't worry we got to do this we got to it wasn't your turn yet maybe you'll be here tomorrow but I want to make sure that I share this with you because here are again when we were talking about the maxims the gravitasi the gravity when we're talking about like yeah my Etienne uh, um, you can't just talk about there being, uh, 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 this is a, a potential argument and a scholarly report and is it true and isn't it not a gravity? No matter how you feel about it, it is. There is a similar practice or application to maxims of law. And I just want to repeat one of the most important or couple of the most important maxims that deal with what we've just discovered. One, all men and women know that the foundation of law and commerce law and commerce exists in the telling of the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth i know you want to add the and so help me god part but but that was all part of the uh, uh, movie stuff and whatever so you can just be like oh it's not any movies let's do my net it's a maxim no matter how you feel about it that is a fact That is something that no matter how you feel, it still exists. You can test it and it will still be the same. Truth as a valid statement of reality is sovereign 
an unrebutted affidavit stands as truth in commerce and an unrebutted affidavit stands as judgment in commerce. It is guaranteed that all men and women shall have a remedy by the due course of the law. I know I didn't get a remedy when I was convicted of drunk driving so many years ago when I was 0 0.014 and the legal limit is 0 0.015. But because there's a zero tolerance uh, at that time in the Western Cape, because uh, what is it, Ellen Zilla was trying to make a big point there, I was made an example of. Opgescored the fauna strong stuff in a movie so fine. Commerce. Where was their fairness? Where was their remedy for me? When I was like, yeah, but it's under the legal limit. I'm not, this is my first time offense. I've never, for 10 years, I sat with a criminal record where I wasn't able to get employment. All because all of this, all men and women shall have a remedy by due course of the law. We are not being given our due course in the law. The court system is fake. It's false. It's a bunch of liars that are serving the crown that are only here to manipulate you for commerce. Why do you think that in the in these magistrates' courts and everything, it just all comes down to a fine or, or jail? If you can't pay, go to jail. And if you can pay, don't go to jail. But we'll keep it against you just in case you go and screw up again. And if you do, we'll take you to jail. Which, if you pay a bigger fine, you'll be able to... Commerce people, wake up. If a remedy does not exist, or if the existing remedy has been subverted, then one, I, you, the living man or woman, may create a remedy for themselves and endow it with their credibility in an affidavit because you have unlimited liability as a living man or woman. Not like a public entity, not like these um, uh, corporations that have to have uh, public liability insurance. You have your own credibility. Now, this is the part that I really want you to, 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 to understand. Again, a maxim. All corporate government, because they operate in commerce, is based upon commercial affidavits, commercial contracts, commercial liens, and commercial distresses. As you know, like I said, I'll up. As you know, I didn't come with my license, I'll say it again. It is the law enforcement. <laughs> Suck my butthole. All corporate government is based upon commercial liens, affidavits, contracts, and commercial distress. This means that government cannot exercise the power to expunge their commercial process. The legitimate political power of a corporate entity is absolutely dependent upon its possession of a commercial bond. That's that public liability insurance thing we were talking about against public hazard. And this was established in 1920, if you just want to be sure, like since when? Since 1920, and it hasn't changed a single day since then, that they must have public liability insurance. Because no bond, and that's the same uh, as a uh, public liability insurance uh, um, or a protection against uh, hazard, commercial bond. Uh, no, because no commercial bond means no responsibility. No responsibility means no power of official signature. And no power of official uh, signature means no legitimate corporate political power. This means that there is no privilege to operate those acts or statutes or bylaws as the corporate vehicle. And the corporate legal power is secondary to commercial guarantors. That's you, the secured interest party. That's who you are. Their corporate power, their corporate legal power is secondary, subservient. What do say the Constitution is supreme? Alice has done it. Well, subservient to that is your um, corporate guarantor. Case law is not a responsible substitute for a bond. You can't say, Yeah, my oma die, and the man not to get slated on it, so a license get slated, and they do not get slated. That's now the reason why. It is not a substitute for a bond. You can't tell me that you are not protected or you don't have public liability insurance. And now because of another instance that I, it is not a responsible substitute for a bond. And be very careful, public officials. If you are trying to 
uh, use commercial distress to try to enforce these laws on people because then you will personally be responsible and your bond and your personal property will then be held as security and surety. So then, verloor jy jou huis. Jy verloor dan jou mens, uh, jou, jou werk. Jy verloor jou inkomst. Jy verloor jou pensioen. Because case law is not a responsible substitute for a bond. Municipal corporation, which includes the cities, the counties, the provinces, uh, the national government, and their entities international, have no commercial reality without bonding of the equity, uh, of the entity. Its vehicles, its statutes, its effects, and its um, execution of its uh, uh, rules, judicial or non-judicial uh, uh, commercial judicial acts and orders originate from limited liability. Let's say allow that you, know, you can get a beautiful loan from Absa Bank. I remember, we uh, Absa Bank is a limited liability insurance company because they have public liability insurance. It's b- uh, based on their limited, li- um, limited liability of the entity uh, and v- the value of the municipal corporation and it must be retained and must be, uh, be accompanied by an affidavit and or commercial liability insurance. I want not to upset you. I don't want you to go and fight uh, the traffic cop or fight the bank manager or fight the people that are trying to now enforce this commercial distress on you and threaten you to go into court. I want you to upskill and upgrade your knowledge Upgrade your wisdom and spend the time looking at these things. I know you only care about going to court or knowing about court and the law when it's your turn to appear. And how do you appear? What does appear mean? You out of thin air. That legal entity that you are the uh, prime uh, secured interest party of, your name, your birth certificate, your ID number. When you just appear, that's like when you are saying, this fake, false, uh, uh, legal entity, I am that. You appear out of nowhere, out of thin air. Spend time knowing these things. I'm going to do this a couple more. Uh, we've got quite a lot to, dis- uh, to go through. Let me just quickly check where we are on my document, which I was sharing. And I want to... Let you know I don't have it available. It's not for download. It's my own personal little document. Uh, we still have to go through the following. So we got the Bill of Rights we went through. We've done the law. We're going to look at natural law. We're going to look at natural rights. We're going to look at the legal interpretism, of, uh, interpretivism, excuse me, legal positivism. We're going to look at legal realism. And then we're going to get to the stuff that I've been talking about, these legal maxims. That's going to be the thing that's a game changer. That will be a game changer for all of us. Um, there's another one. What is the law in South Africa? Which ones are the actual ones that apply? So that once we know what all this background stuff is, what exactly is the law? How do I con- how do I act out? How do I do this? What is the legal imp- interpretation in South Africa? What are some of the statute laws? Uh, what is South African court system? What is the Department of Justice and the constitutional development? What is the judiciary of South Africa? We still have so much to go through. So many pieces of information. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is literally just a small portion of some uh, information that's available that you can even go and find on your own. I'm going to quickly go to the comments and see if there's any comments. Oh, wow. I've already seen there's a couple of people that have given gifts and things. Kai Gangs, thank you so much for that. I appreciate Love you for your participation. And for those that are still watching, all of you, I am so grateful for you taking the time out uh, this last hour and a half. And that's what it seems like these sessions are. They're about an hour and a half long. I hope they bring a lot of clarity to you and a little bit more empowerment to you and um we'll just quickly go to the comments and see if there's anything in uh, that might need answering uh oh beverly said that she's admin brilliant beverly thank you for letting us know about admin on the whatsapp groups um lumeria our government the con artist 100 percent taswell please tell me why don't you put this on tv for everyone to see uh so when in my time working as a uh in the media marketing and all these other corporate places back in the time when i was still uh buying into the bullshit and believing the lie because i just thought yeah man i must progress you know i'm i'm the first of the people in my family that went to university i'm the first one that went all that other stuff that just feed that ego and make your cup swell 
for you to get a 30 second advert on TV where people will see it is going to cost me more money than what my family makes in a year. More money than it would cost for me to do this every single day and ask every person that watches to donate 10 rand. More money than it would cost for me to say everybody that's maybe international that knows that their foreign currency is worth much more here uh, in South Africa to donate in their euros and their dollars for me to get this information on TV. Outside of the financial implication, like I mentioned, legacy media is controlled by white monopoly money. There's no way they want people to know this. Why don't you see it? Who am I? Who am I? Some Bushman Rasta that South just said, not a Rasta, I'm a, uh, but just because of the dreads, everybody assumes I'm a Rasta. But some Bushman out here in the middle of the West Coast that's an indigenous chief that's most of the time sounding like a call center team leader. Who can I trust him? He didn't. He went to university, but he didn't graduate. He's currently unemployed because he doesn't have any employment options because he's either too overqualified or too underqualified or it's not the right sex or not the right color or he doesn't... Or in his own businesses and the own things that he's trying to do instead of asking for handouts, the, the people that have the capacity to take advantage of the value that comes from it won't even do it, won't even share it with the ones that will. There is an exclusion for the truth you need to discover it and i will give it away for free here i will give it away and i will repeat it and i will do it in whatever moon means and i have capable of doing it for those that are willing because i know when you get something for free you don't value it as much but you value your time that's why you will be like because you know that what you are giving me is worth way more than money it's worth way more than an insider saying, Kiki man, it's in a connection by KFM. Come on, you don't need a great voice. You should be a voiceover artist. I'm sick of hearing that. Thank you for the compliment. But I'm tired of you telling me, wow, you should be good doing this. Why don't you do this? Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Action. Enable it. Enable it. Take the action. If you know someone, if you have somebody, make the effort, stand in, and make it happen. But until that time, all that I have is all that I need in order to get what I want. And what I want is I want to impact the world positively through connection, creation, and conversation so we can reduce suffering and increase kindness to all soul carriers. I hope that you your question, but so long as someone not for me that geleentheid, and if you are an international, if you are somebody saying, look, Etienne, I can actually sponsor and I can donate to you, then do it. You can go follow the link in my website and you can go and connect with me via email, jump on my news list, go to the direct uh, donations through PayPal. You can send me a WhatsApp or not a WhatsApp, you can send me an email. You can go to my um, inbox message and you can say, Away brah, send for me your uh, cell phone number, I'll e-wallet you. Send me your, um, here is a, a ShopRite voucher, gaan haal het af. And this is not me begging for money. I could also sit there, but I won't. I know what I'm worth. And I know what you're worth. You're priceless. Unlimited liability. Sovereign. The original credit guarantor. The only reason why money, that paper money, those randellas, those dollars, those francs, those euros, those pounds, have any value is because of you and me. Period. Exclamation mark full stop. (laughs) So until that time, we're never going to get... On TV, as well. I'm sorry, it's never gonna happen. Lemuria, they don't want people to know, that's why it won't be on TV. True. And also, my content's being suppressed. If you don't engage, if you don't comment, if you don't share, if you don't, um, even if it's just a harki, even if you don't do, then the, the, the way that it's all set up is nobody wants to see this, nobody actually cares about it. We can't push this for more people to see. And that's not me trying to get more likes or subscribers or whatever. That's me with the expert knowledge I have of how social media works. Uh, Lemuria, they want to keep everyone dumb and down and control you with fear. 100%. Magriet van Rensburg, hi. Nog nie, ek het nie meer dag gaan nie. So is die dag ook het stier vir my. <laughs> Daar is wel, wacht vir my plante. Because uh, there's still lots of people that think that this is a scam. Outside of people thinking that this is a scam, think about this. If your entire life, you believe to be true that you are colored, that the only way to get resolved is if the court gives you an issue uh, or, or a court order comes out or if a president or a ruling party makes a decision, if parliament. Do you think that there's going to be anything to, to help you realize that that is a fallacy and everything is based on your consent? Everything. 
everything is based on your consent. If that's true, we will, we know we don't consent to 350 a month. So gaat man, yeah, yeah, and mom is maybe 350 rand doesn't even buy you 50, 60 units of, of electricity. At any shop, 350 rand is never going to buy you enough to feed your family for a day. <laughs> Get out of here. You would never consent. That's why they don't want you to know this. Uh, let's have a look here. What are some of the other comments? Uh, there's a lot of people that think that it's a scam. True. You must ask TikTok influencers. <laughs> TikTok influencers, there's much respect to them and their hustle. They don't care about this. They want to provide for themselves and their family. They're after their numbers because the numbers will speak and that will provide for them. That's how they make money. I don't make a single cent. All these gifts and these beautiful things that I get sent, the roses and the quickies and whatever. Uh, yesterday, I had 120,000 likes on yesterday's live. Do you know how much that translates into uh, money? Two dollars. And do you know how much I'm able to withdraw from my TikTok account once I actually have accumulated as a hundred dollars? Once I have accumulated a hundred dollars, I can withdraw it. Two dollars came from a hundred and twenty thousand likes. I've had videos that have over a hundred thousand views. No dollars. So trust me, TikTok influencers, they need to choose. And nobody's going to, I'm not going to convince somebody. You're not supposed to tell somebody to do something. They must do it of their own free volition and their own decision. You're a sovereign. Nobody needs to tell you this. You do it on your own. I'm doing this out of my own. For what benefit? For the sake that those people that are here, the ones that are watching, that are on my digital community, that are commenting, that are participating, that they are finding value. And I have a duty to continue to provide that value for as long as there's one person. I will continue to do it. Um, let's see, what was the other comment here? They don't want people, yeah, fear is the name of the game, 100%, because fear makes you just react, not respond. I don't even know your kind that vaccinated, can I do it? Oh, never, I don't want to lose my child. Ha, 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 can I lose what Pfizer's a deal with South Africa? Tag TikTok influencers in this for more exposure. Thanks, Charmaine, why don't you do it? What's stopping you? I love how people have so many suggestions, but they don't take the action themselves. Everything I tell you, I've done. Everything I share, everything that I claim to know, everything I've done myself. Because experience trumps what you think to know, theory. Do it yourself. Tag them. I've tagged people. I've tagged Metro. I've tagged KFM. I've tagged Smile. Do you think on the ones that everybody's saying, yo, this guy's such a great comedian. He's such a good voice artist. Do you think that they even looked... Do you think that that intern that they are paying peanuts on the dollar with the empty promise of a potential job is actually going to say some bushman out there without a t-shirt that's shouting into a homemade mic on his little cock top, crap top is deserving of an opportunity to get airtime when it costs us, uh, it gets us paid lots of money from all these private advertisers? Never. Do it yourself. Don't say something and then not be able to back it up with your own action. I'm an influencer myself. I say that because I know what I am. Uh, solstice we have been double crossed and sold into the system 100% we have been the double cross of St. Peter's Square at the Vatican Woo! that's going to be one of them I think for the end of this week I'm going to talk about the papal bulls and that stuff that the Catholic Church and the Pope most put out to, for the age of discovery we'll, dis we'll discuss that today uh, at the end of the week the number 20 in Roman numerals is written XX United Kingdom GB double cross in their flag Woo! solstice it looks like somebody is informed you must be an enlightened one. The double cross of Freemasonry. You know, if you mention anything about Freemasonry, they always come as like, you don't know shit about Freemasonry. Yes, I can want to do when you have a stony vote with honey. I didn't buy a charity. Yeah, whatever. I know about the hidden hand. I know. I know what they do. I know who the elite families are. I know who they are. I know who their houses are. But what does that help me if I don't do anything about it? The X on the British flag is the Scottish cross. Thanks, Gideon. Uh, X goes much deeper. Thanks, Solstice. That's true. And still, they they will vote ANC. Who's they? I, I just want to uh, have you ask this question for yourself, Gideon. What do you do as you now can out finger wise? As you now begin, yeah, these dumb goods are not yet. What does that help? Forget race and color. Let's say this in your A camp and your AIs and Amma is not yet that dumb they and vote for the ANC. What do you think can really have an impact? Bring. You want a remedy? Bring a manier om for them to enlighten, om for them to beter te equip en enable om beter besluit te neem om maar net om modder te gooi en om kak te praat los het maar by jou 
the flow of the dead dead cash cash Woo, solstice niemand jay would you come out one of these uh i hope you've invited me as uh i hope we're friends because it looks like we got to have you come on to one of the lives and we can talk a little bit i think that's uh there are some people that know things and i don't know everything i've never claimed to i've never stand to say i know everything all i know is what i know from what i've searched for and i've tried to look at and you can know it too i want to give thanks and praise to our creator who lives in us there's nobody coming to save you from the clouds there's no some special person god is everything and everywhere and everyone we give thanks and praise to our creator for the gift of life love and peace that i and i experience my seed my queen my friends and my family and my enemies and all men living men and women friends families and enemies in this life and in all the lives to come peace be with you i'll see you in the next one thank you so much for everybody that joined in kai gangs i say i'll see you in the next one